So now we will start with our first keynote speech. We're going to learn more about the war in Atak um, and the geopolitical excursion, as well as the media development. And we're going to hear from Mr. Khant Melik Shaznazaran. Um, he was here already. He is the editor-in-chief of the analytical portals boskanapat.info as well as times.am. So welcome, Khant. I'm very happy to see you again. I'm very happy to see everybody again. A lot of friends. I really miss you very much. And um, thank you for this opportunity to speak again about, uh, I can say, the most important problem of our country, of our people. Um, you know, when we are speaking about the uh, war, about the Karabakh war, I can say that uh, we have uh, with Azerbaijan more than 100 years of experience of this hostility. Uh, the real conflict uh, started uh, in 1980 uh, when the Azerbaijan was first time uh, announced its sovereignty and uh, that time uh, territorial problems with Azerbaijan started that time and we had uh, two years of war in uh, the beginning of the uh, 20th century and then in the time of Soviet period, uh, you know, Azerbaijan and Armenia and also the Karabakh, uh, we were the part of Soviet Union. But also, uh, even at that time, there were a lot of clashes uh, between Armenian and Azerbaijani people in Karabakh and not in Karabakh, also in the other places where uh, they live together. For example, uh, the city Ganja, now it's Armenian called Ganzak. Uh, the city was uh, two part, one of uh, one part was Armenian populated and the other one was Azerbaijani populated and at least uh, we know four uh, times in the Soviet time history when Armenians and Azerbaijani, Azerbaijans in the Ganzak city started to uh, hostel uh, with each other, confrontize and uh, also there were a lot of killed people. But the most active phase of this conflict, it became uh, uh, during the collapse of Soviet Union uh, in the end of the, the 20th century, the 1988. Uh, and, uh, you know, from 1990 and from 1994, there was a five year uh, war between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, I'm sorry, between Karabakh and Azerbaijan because Karabakh announced its sovereignty from Soviet uh, Union as well as it did Armenia and Azerbaijan. The same rules, the same international regulations, and uh, but in Azerbaijan they didn't accept the choice of uh, people of Nagorno-Karabakh to live in, in the independent country and uh, started for that time I was a child, uh, I was just seven, six, seven years old when my family uh, moved to Nagorno-Karabakh and all that time I was in the, uh, in the, in the Stepanakert uh, which was bomb bombing uh, and uh, there was a really very, very uh, difficult and mass massive war. Uh, just a second, I just... Uh, I'm so sorry, I just want to introduce my uh, new book uh, about the first war, war in the Karabakh. There were memory, my memories about uh, that war. And this picture, uh, by the way, was uh, done by Makartish Tonoyan. It is uh, work, uh, I used it and also other pictures. And this book was published uh, just uh, one uh, week before the second uh, big war started in Nagorno-Karabakh. As you know, in the, at the uh, 27th of September, Azerbaijan again attacked Nagorno-Karabakh and uh, war started. Uh, I will now say just uh, about the geopolitical issues of this war because, you know, it is not just a confrontation between Armenia and Azerbaijan, but uh, it is also a big influence of uh, geopolitical countries uh, such as Russian Federation, such as the United States, uh, European Union in face of France, and of course the regional countries, especially Turkey, uh, which was trying to do everything to be involved in the political processes of our region, of South Caucasus. 
um, from the 1994, when the first war over, uh, there was a ceasefire and there was a negotiation process between Armenia and Azerbaijan under the patronage of uh, Minsk Group, so chairs. The Minsk Group is the uh, institution, uh, international institution uh, which was uh, managing to solve the conflict uh, without uh, war. And there were uh, 11 countries involved in this Minsk Group, but only three of them are so chairman, co-chairs, and uh, the negotiations was uh, holding with the France, United States, Russia Federation, and Armenia and Azerbaijan. So, Turkey uh, for the last 25 years was always trying to be involved in this negotiation process because they uh, were understanding that uh, Minsk group uh, don't discuss just the conflict in our region but also the other issues of the South Caucasus and it was the institute where United States, uh, Russia and France were uh, making their policy together in this region and Turkey every time wanted to be involved there and every time Armenia was uh, the tyrants, uh, Turkey's uh, uh, activity in this region. And uh, just uh, uh, before this war started, the second big uh, war started, Turkey announced its uh, the part, uh, announced its, uh, so there was, uh, there were, uh, work together with Azerbaijan and they announced the uh, part of the conflict uh, from the side of Azerbaijan and it was the major political shift in this situation because uh, before as I told Turkey couldn't uh, do its policy here and now they started to support Azerbaijan uh, support uh, with political, economical and military uh, every, uh, Turkey did everything and they uh, could change the situation and involved in the conflict and now uh, many countries are uh, discussing with the Turkey the uh, possibilities of uh, resolving this conflict now. And Turkey is now really very very involved in this uh, conflict. And uh, by the way I can say that uh, Turkey uh, works uh, very active uh, in all its neighboring regions. Uh, if you uh, follow their policy, you can see uh, their activities in the Middle East, you can see their activities in the uh, Black Sea, uh, Black Sea area, in the Eastern Europe, everywhere they are very active. And now they have uh, also South Caucasus uh, as a part of, uh, I can say, political trade with the uh, US, European Union, and especially with the Russian Federation. So if uh, we can, if we speak about the main geopolitical issue of this war, we can say that uh, Turkey is now a very active part of uh, policy in South Caucasus region. Uh, United States and France, uh, their role uh, in this conflict uh, uh, very decreased because uh, you know that uh, uh, there was a Russian president uh, efforts to stop the war and now all these negotiations are uh, going mainly with Russia, Azerbaijan and Armenia and uh, the Minsk group uh, co-chairman's institute I can say that now is not working and we see that uh, for example Mike Pompeo's uh, last journey in Europe uh, in France he was discussing very much with uh, his uh, French partnership uh, partners, uh, the situation in Karabakh and how they can again increase the role of uh, uh, US and France in uh, this conflict. But I can say that the geopolitics of the of our regions is really very changed. Uh, Turkey uh, became very active player, and uh, it uh, gives possibilities to Turkey to. Uh, be active also in other regions and especially in the negotiations with the uh, Western world. Uh, what can I say about this, this war in Artsakh? Uh, maybe I will now share also my screen. I have some photos that I would like to show you because as uh, you already know, I, uh, I am the editor of Time CM News Agency and Voskanapat Info. In the second day of the world, we went to Nagorno-Karabakh and started uh, to broadcast some news and uh, 
the happenings what the, is there from uh, the place, from the Nagorno-Karabakh. It was very hard because there was uh, big problems with the internet connection there. And we uh, borrowed some technique uh, with the, uh, you can say that uh, uh, for, for uh, on-air broadcastings. But um, in, the se in the second uh, day, we stopped this on-air broadcasting because the Azerbaijani side was following our media. And when we are going on-air, they see what's happening uh, uh, near us and starting to bomb these places. And that's why we changed uh, this uh, practice and started to uh, so work with uh, studios or in the dark places where the Azerbaijani sites and their drones can't find us. And uh, it, it was much more uh, safer to be like this. I was uh, introduced here, the, our soldiers, they're all my students except uh, the one who is in the center with the paper. Uh, I can say that uh, one of uh, the best of my students, and unfortunately, uh, one of them is killed now. And I can say that in this time, in this war, Armenian side lost more than 5,000 our soldiers. And among them, I have very much close friends, unfortunately, children of, our, of my friends, and I can say that this war, yes, from the human side, it was very painful for me personally. This is the city of Stepanakert after bombings. Azerbaijanis used every, everything, air bombs. I don't know if you know the smirches and uh, other things. And I can say that every bomb was making so many casualties and you can see it in the photo, it's a part of a bomb they were using in Karabakh. In the uh, cities, uh, uh, which I, these photos which I made, there were nowhere, there were uh, military, nothing, and just uh, population. And I was working very much in the borderline. I was working with uh, my journalists and uh, journalists from uh, other countries, uh, especially international journalists, because, you know, uh, I just wanted to help them with the translation, I don't know, to Russian, English, and, and to show the places, because uh, in the war time, it is, uh, not everything is good or it was good organized there and uh, our help i think it was important for them and of course uh, used some uh, opportunity to stay with our soldiers to speak with them what is going on around because they also wanted to understand who is their enemy was their uh, plans maximum what the uh, the plans minimum and so on and I used the opportunity to make some pictures from these borderlines. Uh, where are we now? I can say that the war is over. Unfortunately, Armenian side was defeated in this war and uh, we lost very much. And uh, people, we lost very much territories from Karabakh. Uh, we lost our uh, influence in the region. Uh, our political sources and many, many things that I can say we will need some uh, decades to recover everything this. Now Armenia is really in the, in the real morning, morning. You can see the graves in Yarabalur, where from the left side is the uh, holes for the new soldiers and from the right side are the new graves. And uh, I can say that every uh, two hours, we are now uh, making three funerals at the same time. And this is the funeral from uh, of the son of my very close friend. I make these pictures. And uh, parallel with this, we have political uh, protests now, big meetings and uh, demandings to government to uh, go down because in Armenia and me also uh, we are 
very, very sure that everything could be much more better than it is now. And it's a really very important part now for the political negotiations to improve some kind of situation. But with this government who uh, went and signed subscription, uh, unfortunately, we can't uh, work anymore in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have some questions, I will have, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Khan Malik Shamazarian, um, also for sharing your personal stories and um, I'm very sorry for your losses. Thank you. There was one first uh, question from Olena. She was asking um, something about your book. Um, is it a novel or monograph? Can you say, can you repeat the name of the book again? It's monograph. Uh, it's uh, mostly memories about uh, the first Karabakh war. It is like something, uh, unfortunately I can't translate it to, to, into English, but I will now do it and write in the chat how it will be called in English. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. I Maybe also the original name, so. Navirmi uh, Vakayutsun. And, and, and uh, you said the uh -huh. daughter of Mr. Tunoyan. Um, yeah, you see this picture uh, was done by Mr. Uh, Tonoyan. By Mr. Tonoyan. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Tonoyan. It caused mm -hmm. memories of war. Mm -hmm. You see the soldier who was uh, memorizing the war. And also in this book, there are some graffitis also. Everything was done by Mr. Tonoyan. Okay. I can say that uh, just, again, my personal experience that uh, Mukartic is one of uh, my biggest teachers, I can say like this. He was a soldier in the first war, uh, I was child there, and he was uh, interested in paintings, in philosophy, and when I was a schoolboy, I had many, many discussions with him about some philosophical issues and so on. And uh, I started to write stories just uh, following the uh, experience and uh, suggestions of Makartich Tonoyan. So I have never told you about it, but yes, Mukuch is my teacher, and that's why I am very happy that in my book everything is uh, the pictures are done by him. Yeah, thank you for letting us know. And um, yeah, that's wonderful. I didn't know about this connection. Does anyone have any questions? Maybe also about, maybe not only about the book in general. And I could ask a question about the yes. peace agreement um, or however, the, 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 the ceasefire. Um, as I read, Azerbaijan and, and Turkey have now a corridor that links uh, Nakhchivan and the Azerbaijani mainland. Um, can you tell us more about the reason why they got that? I mean, that's not really connected to uh, Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, what's the problem? In the beginning of the uh, first years of uh, Soviet period, uh, the, the power in the Moscow was uh, just seeking for the uh, possibilities to control the conflict between Armenian and Azerbaijan nations. And the geography of our region was, the border was uh, underlined like uh, this, that our Karabakh was like an um, enclave in Azerbaijan, and Azerbaijan could, uh, didn't have a uh, connection with Nakhichevan, which was also before Armenian uh, territories and uh, was populated by Armenians. So uh, to control this conflict and to have uh, both nations uh, under their control, the Soviet time leadership decided to make uh, such a geography. And now, yes, Azerbaijan uh, don't have a, a direct access to Nakhichevan, but uh, with this capitulation, which uh, was signed by Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, there was a point about uh, giving them a corridor uh, from the south regions of Armenia's unique region, we have there the city Meri, 
uh, which is uh, just uh, in the border with Iran. And uh, I think there will be uh, some road which Azerbaijan uh, can use to uh, go to the Nakhchivan. Before that, they were using uh, the territory of Iran and some how some kind also the territory of Georgia to go uh, around Armenia from south and the uh, north. So uh, now they will have possibility and uh, uh, from Azerbaijani side, it will be leave possibility to Armenians to have connection with Karabakh from the Lachin corridor. Lachin corridor was also uh, under Armenia's control after the first war, but uh, in this war uh, there was uh, like the Armenian side accepted to uh, leave this territory also to Azerbaijan, just leaving for us five kilometers uh, corridor to have connection with uh, Karabakh's uh, cities, Stepanakert, Martakert, Martuni, and Askeran mostly. Thank you very much both for the question and the answer. Uh, I just wrote it into the chat. If you want, you can also write your questions into the chat or just um, ask our keynote speakers directly. So don't hesitate. Thank you very much. Either way. And I have a, uh, I have a question. Uh, thank you very much for your explanations about the situation. And uh, on the other side, we also have the Russians, uh, uh, peacekeepers, meanwhile in the Bergkarabakh and South K uh, Caucasus region as a, uh, as a new uh, role uh, between Turkey, uh, uh, Armenia, uh, Baku, um, and so on. What do you think about this, um, this new or uh, developed role of, uh, of Russia uh, uh, in the region, um, also connected with uh, their uh, conflict, uh, with a conflict between Turkey and, uh, and Russia. What does that all mean? I think in the future it can be the reason for conflict between Turkey and Russia, uh, because Turkey also wants to have their uh, military forces in Nagorno-Karabakh. They tried a lot uh, in the results of this war to solve this uh, problem for them, uh, to have their militaries. And uh, they even uh, have the permission of Turkish parliament to send Turkish troops to Nagorno-Karabakh. But uh, Armenian side and uh, Russian side are against this. And uh, the solution was find it is that uh, there will be a joint Russian-Turkish control center. Uh, which will control for the uh, works of Russian uh, peacekeepers and Armenian and Azerbaijani sites uh, militaries uh, for this period. Uh, it will work for one year, for now it's uh, right, about, uh, right for one year, but in the future I'm sure that Turkey will uh, try to increase their military presence in the Karabakh. The second problem for Turkey is uh, from Azerbaijan's Azerbaijan side, but I think Azerbaijan will solve this problem because uh, by the constitution of Azerbaijan, no uh, foreign militaries can be uh, located in their territory. So they will have to change this point in their constitution. And at that time, I think uh, Turkey uh, will be able to solve the uh, question of their military presence just uh, with uh, connection and with uh, uh, cooperation with Azerbaijan side. So they will not need uh, others' uh, permissions. But you know that uh, Russians' military were located in Armenia just from the beginning of the 1990s. And we have agreement with uh, Russia until the 2044. And their military base in Gyumri, where the uh, uh, fine arts are located. Uh, they are military bases which is uh, helping Armenia with borders uh, with Turkey. So Armenia and Turkish border uh, for the last 30 years was controlled by Russian militaries. And now, now we can say that the geography of uh, Russian uh, military location in our region is uh, becoming larger. Now it will include also Nagorno-Karabakh. And uh, 
it is problem, of course, uh, not just for Turkey, but also uh, for the Western countries who are uh, competing for the influence in our region. Maybe for the Iranian side, because we noticed that after this war, Iran's increased its military uh, presence in the borderlines with Nagorno-Karabakh, and every day they are bringing new technique, new technique, and new military forces to this border. And uh, many experts are speaking about uh, danger of a bigger conflict uh, between Russia, Turkey, Iran, and so on. But uh, I hope and uh, I think that uh, these uh, issues will be somehow managed and we can uh, uh, say the, somehow uh, not to let this war happen because in this uh, situation, of course, the danger for Armenia, for the smaller countries of the region, is uh, of course much more than it could be uh, before. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions left? Well, yeah, I will use the time uh, as the rant is. Uh, colleague of mine since years. Uh, hi, Rand. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask many other political questions, but I decided to uh, not to. <laughs> I will uh, probably ask uh, a little bit more uh, personal question. Um, you know, when I see uh, photos of you there on the front or even during the process, pr protests in Armenia itself, um, I am just wondering, I, I mean, I guess when I will ask you if you are not afraid personally yourself, you will say, no, I am doing it anyway. But uh, on the other hand, I, you, know, you have a big family <laughs> with small children. And uh, I'm just wondering how it's uh, possible that uh, you are still uh, focusing on, on your goals and aims. And anyways, uh, you, you, you know, you risk your life in, in actually when, when, when I need to be direct. So uh, what keeps you going uh, and moving uh, in, in this topic? Maria, thank you very much for your question. And uh, you know, what can I say about this? I have no answers to give to my sons. They were every year, they are not so big, yes, uh, 12 years, 10 years old, but they are understanding what's going on. And they know that the work of whole life of their grandfather, my father, is now, I can say, it's nothing. We lost everything. And we, have, we will have to answer to our sons to these questions, why it happened and how they can live uh, in country surrounded with enemies and with these borders and many, many other problems. Uh, I think my family is understanding me. Really, they understand. I don't go home for a long time. I don't know, for a week, two weeks. Now I am, of course, in Yerevan, but again, I'm going home uh, uh, at late night. Three days ago, I was jailed by the policeman and uh, was there and now I am free but there is uh, some uh, processes it's continuing and the uh, policemen came to our houses and make some uh, things to find I don't know some improvement that we are doing something against the rules and so on yeah but it is unfortunately the uh, situation in which Armenia and all our nations are living now because the worst is already, I can say, past. We lost 5,000 of our sons, of our brothers, of our friends. And I think that we will have to do everything uh, to somehow make meaningful of their this in this world. We don't have other choices. And I am really very, very grateful to my family, my friends, my mother, uh, who is the last 30 years live in this situation, ext extremistic situation, for understanding and for supporting me in this, uh, uh, in these issues. I can say that the main reason is uh, understanding that I will have to answer to the questions of my 
sons of the children of my friends who were killed and to make some possibilities for them in the future. Well, thanks, I really admire your uh, position, what you do, and I really hope that you will translate the book into English so that I can read it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daria. I miss you too much. Thank you very much both again for the question and the answer of this. Yeah, um, there's one more question in the chat from Alina Avistami. Uh, I mean, in media working Nagorno Karabakh now, are there any difficulties and restrictions on the work at the media due to the side agreement and such a truce? Yeah, Armenian media is working there, and not also and uh, not just Armenian media media, but also international media working there. Uh, a lot of correspondents are going now. We have two roads to go to Stepanakert: one from this Lachin corridor I told you, and the other one from the north side at Karvachar. But unfortunately, in two days, this uh, region will be. Uh, go under control of Azerbaijan. And uh, this latching corridor, which used everybody, is inspected by Russian uh, peacekeepers. But it's uh, more or less safe uh, for the first days after the end of war. Uh, some Armenians were uh, present there by Azerbaijani side, but I can say that for the last four or five days, I didn't hear anything about this danger from this corridor and nobody controls the media work that it's really very free uh, everybody who wants to go there uh, just, just sit uh, take a transport and go to Stepanakert uh, no accreditation uh, needed now at the war time there was accreditation process in the uh, Ministry of Defense here in Armenia and in the uh, government but now uh, you don't need accreditation, you just can go and uh, make news from there from, uh, very free and without any uh, restrictions. Thank you. I mean, Dari, if you have um, more political questions, I think now is the time. We still have time until the next keynote speaker. Right. Well, I, I mean, I, I wanted actually, it's similar to what Wolfgang was asking, but uh, I wanted in general to ask, uh, I mean, I've read many Polish articles uh, about the situation there and uh, it was interesting to read the headlines where it was written that Armenia has lost and Russia won uh, or that they were silently uh, winning and organizing the situation. So, um, yeah, so I, I know as soon as I was always in Armenia, uh, the, the, the people are pro-Russian there. I can also understand why. Uh, and then you are going to Ukraine and they are uh, completely uh, anti-Russia. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so when I was reading the headlines, I wanted to actually ask then Rand, uh, what is his personal uh, opinion about uh, how Russia was acting during this conflict? Uh, one is very clear for me, yeah, Armenia was defeated and Armenia lost. And Armenia, I can say, lost very much. Uh, if uh, Russia had there some uh, profits, I, I cannot say that for sure. Because, you know, I was speaking about the um, uh, activity of Turkey in South Caucasus, and I'm very sure that uh, it was again the national interest of Russia because they understand that uh, the next region is coming is North Caucasus uh, under the Russian territory where a lot of nations and also Turkish nations which are trying to be independent from uh, uh, Russian Federation and the, uh, from now, from after this war, uh, it is, I can say that in the future it's a really danger for territory integrity of uh, Russian Federation. Because, uh, you know, we are speaking about now Dagestan, about Chechnya, about Tatarstan, about Ingushetia, and so on. So, and uh, Turkey uh, was uh, very active in the past uh, three decades 
uh, working with uh, Turkish people of uh, Russian Federation to make them uh, more active, more uh, pro-Turkish and so on. So in this case, I can say that uh, Russia uh, also lost some uh, influence in uh, that region, which is uh, very important for them. But from other side, of course, uh, now we can say that Russian troops are in the Nagorno-Karabakh and it is a really very uh, important factor for the old uh, geopolitics of uh, our region and not uh, and only our region, but uh, also for the Middle East, for the Caspian region, for the region of Black Sea and so on. So uh, it uh, will mean how uh, will uh, at Russia and other geopolitical uh, centers uh, after this war. Uh, after this war, and we will see if someone wins or lost there. Uh, I can say, uh, for the uh, point of view of Armenian people, uh, yeah, uh, the uh, popularity of uh, Russia here in Armenia increased much, uh, very much after this war. So I can understand that uh, Russia had possibilities to uh, stop this war much more earlier. Even I am sure that Russia, Russia has possibility to uh, not to uh, allow this war star at all. But uh, you know, when the country is uh, when in the borderline is a hard situation when you lose everything and come, and the Russian peacekeepers comes and stop the war, uh, the population. Uh, very fast uh, change its mind and uh, become grateful to the force who helped them to stop this war. That's why I will say that we will have to see how to act uh, in the future and how to uh, make our uh, relations also with Russia because yeah, from one side it is peacekeeping mission they have, but from the other side you understand that uh, you lose a very uh, big part of your sovereignty to uh, Russia and you are now very uh, depending on their uh, policy in this region. How will act? I can say for now. For now I will say that the most important uh, thing for Armenia is the future borders between Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan because in this time and this period uh, deciding, uh, deciding very much and uh, after that, after when it will be over these uh, processes, uh, I think that we will have to uh, go back to the Russia, to the Turkey, to the other countries and to understand who uh, could help us more or who uh, couldn't help us uh, at all and understand uh, which relations we will have to, uh, to do with them. But I would say that in the, the war time, uh, Russia was giving Armenia everything we need. Uh, I think about, I say about armor technique, military techniques and many, many other uh, issues that we used during this war. But um, uh, could it do more? I think yes. But uh, from other side, uh, you, we had many help, but we had uh, bad results. So we have to think how to do with this. And could, could the, because now focusing on the Armenian, I mean, Yerevan situation, could the government do more? Because I also read articles where it was written that actually people are frustrated that the president uh, signed the agreement. And uh, I was in Armenia, I mean, many times, but, but once uh, when I, as I was there, uh, it was almost directly after the revolution. And now again, uh, it's, I mean, the situation is people are again not satisfied. So um, would the other government, the previous one, react uh, differently or, or there was no other chance he needed to do this? And, no, uh, Daria, uh, I think it's a very good question. Uh, unfortunately, I'm totally sure that all guilt of this situation is laying on our uh, government. If uh, we go back, for example, to my Facebook story uh, length, uh, for one month or two months or uh, one year, uh, you will see that I was every time pointing the mistakes of this government, which will uh, in finally bring us to the war and which will in finally bring us 
to the uh, isolation from the regional and uh, regional uh, developments and uh, with the problem with our traditional uh, friend countries. Uh, I can bring uh, more than 20 reasons and mistakes of this government. And now I can say for sure that Unfortunately, yes, when we are speaking about the mistakes, about the guilty of this war, first of all, we will have to look at our government and at us and at us. Because, uh, yes, there were a lot of uh, political systems which were uh, deteriorating uh, the possibility of war. And this government lost everything for the last uh, two and a half years. And now we have this result of... Uh, I can say, uh, I don't want to use bad words, but the wrong policy of our government. Thank you very much for these insights. Does anyone else have any questions? If we still have time, I could ask something. Yeah, sure, we know. Um, actually, that happened also before the last stage of the project. There were also um, attacks on, on the city Ganja, as I heard in the media. And also, uh, Armenian representatives in Germany said, maybe you, you can explain why these attacks happened, because I, I didn't really get the connection to Nagorno-Karabakh. Mm -hmm. uh, Minister of Defense of Armenia pointed eight or nine uh, military uh, targets near the city Ganja or inside the city Ganja. Uh, and uh, when uh, Armenian side was bombing Ganja, the main uh, targets were uh, military. But of course, uh, I saw that uh, there were also uh, clashes in uh, casualties in the civilian part of this city. But I can uh, also say that it's from my uh, experience. For example, I am, tra I am uh, working in the Stepanakert. Uh, if you see the uh, cutters from the places where it was bombed, uh, it is like, seems like all cities in the, in the ruins and uh, you know the uh, journals are focusing just uh, in the problem uh, places, not in the all uh, the city. Uh, and I can say that Stepanakert, yeah, a, a lot of uh, buildings are destroyed there in Stepanakert, but the city in uh, all its stands, and uh, uh, you, you can go and see that it's, uh, I can say, more or less normal city. Uh, Azerbaijan's use the same, uh, I think, uh, propaganda. Uh, Act when they are just uh, f uh, showing one or two house and uh, they are making picture like all city is in ruins. But uh, the main military targets were uh, defeated there in uh, Ganja city, and uh, some houses near of these were uh, were also uh, destroyed. That's why, but. Uh, from the other side, uh, as I uh, was feeling there, uh, every time I was getting information about bombing of Ganja, just after they were bombing the uh, city of Stepanakert. And I can say that uh, two times uh, Ganja was bombed by Armenian sites. And uh, after each time, for two or three days, Azerbaijani sites stopped to bomb Stepanakert uh, there. So they were understanding that it is some kind, I can say, also on an answer of the bombing of Stepanakert. Uh, for Armenia side, it was good that we had their military targets in uh, Ganja, and it was, uh, I can say, that uh, legal reason to uh, work on that targets. Thank you very much.